that Skype actually holds up this time. It's and totally they, fine, uh, man. We had a uh, we had a wild time. I'm actually thrilled. We were we were our big plan, our big ambitious plan was to do two episodes last night to accommodate the new schedule and halfway we we finished the one. <laughs> the best and, laid plan. Um, immediately Skype started to fuck up. I thought because you were uploading the file. So I just I didn't think much of it. I'm like, "All right, cool, whatever." Uh, and then it it really all fell apart, and we took that as a sign, and we didn't do it. And <laughs> then I went back and I listened to the f- the one we had already recorded, and Skype was like like a like a bad friend. <laughs> it was like <laughs> it was a really shitty situation. Wait, uh, Skype was a bad up. friend. Like Skype was a right, bad friend. Skype wrote your girlfriend at four in the morning on Facebook yeah chat. yeah exactly. Like fucking Skype got me into a bar fight over some shit I had nothing to do with. I love it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that was most of my my early morning, the time I would normally spend well, uh, meditating you, and asking I mean, deep this questions. This gives me fills me full of hope. You woke up at six in the morning to do 5. the podcast. Five twenty, whatever. That's like when I go to bed. Well, I didn't. I that's just when I wake up. I mean, that's just <laughs> that's when I get up. But I didn't get up to do the podcast. There was only three minor edits where we, like, bumbled words. And I'm like, all right, well, you know what? I'll get up. They're already marked. I'll cut those three things. I'll, like, I'll get this shit knocked out in five minutes. It it didn't pan out that way. I just <laughs> cracked a, open a fucking Diet Coke. I'm ready. That. I'm so ready to go. Yeah, it and didn't go that way. It was wrong. Well, I just want to say, I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast, but I appreciate uh, all you do. To make this sound so good, I feel like you've said that before, but I'll take it anyway. Well, I, I say it offline, but considering that I'm, you know, I have like a shaky setup, I do appreciate that. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. Yeah, this bud's for you. The podcast this saved bud's, my life, man. This podcast for you. <laughs> for all you do, this podcast for you. I had a dream last night that I ran a punk podcast. Like Enterprise. How, like a network, like a punk podcast network? Yeah, but it was huge. It was like Fox or like CBS. And the fascinating question, the, the, the $100,000 question literally <laughs> is how would you ever get a punk kid to pay for something? Um, well, I mean, perfect example, I ruined Nick Workle's Fantasy League by not paying the fee today. I felt <laughs> slightly bad for that. I, you know, I thought Yahoo was bluffing because I keep getting these messages like, oh, you better pay or else. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, the fucking why, the one we did last year. I assume that Yahoo was bluffing. The one we did last year, I didn't pay until like December. So I was like, you know, we can, I can hold off on that. I got other things to spend $75 on. And then everybody got their money refunded <laughs> less this morning. Because I didn't pay, I was the only one who didn't pay. You think they'd give me like a like a warning message? Like you're the only one. Not only did you have you not paid, but you're gonna look like shit, look like the cheapskate here. Yep. And so what the fuck? I like that Dave set up a VPN to pay for his. So um, that's uh, that's he's a, he's a taskmaster, a problem a solver. Master. Uh, whatever. <laughs> 
Are you going to do that thing now where you feel guilty, but you don't want to admit guilt, so you're just like, fuck it, whatever. It's a joke anyway. Who cares? I don't feel guilty ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I think the last time I felt, oh, my God, I have to really dig, dig deep into the vault, the emotional vault. When did I last feel guilty? Let's ask each other heavy questions for the first five minutes. All right. When did you last feel guilty, Andrew? Uh, today. What happened? I want to talk about it, but I can't. It's no, work it's, stuff. It's a chalk but thing. It's a chalk thing, but it's weird because it's like I shouldn't feel guilty for it at all. Like I'm 110% on the right side of history on this and you know all that it's (laughs) i guess maybe it wasn't guilt maybe i answered the question wrong i felt sympathy for somebody doing something majorly wrong and being caught by me you know what i mean it's just like it's that's more like pity yeah it's i i didn't answer the question right because yeah that's i i i felt a certain amount of guilt in you know, bringing it to light, but yeah, you're, you're right. It, it is, I, you know, I feel weird. I, I do that. I feel weird pity toward people who are probably totally fine. Like I'll just see like a girl out or a, or a guy out. Right. Or just walk by me and he's got like, this is so fucked up, but I'll see, I like, won't like what he's wearing. So I'll have to I'll take pity on him. Oh yeah, oh for sure. I do that constantly. I love but it. It's I, my favorite I, part of life. I didn't realize that I did that, but I felt super shitty about it. Like I feel shitty about it. I guess. Am I I don't know. I'm on the least amount of antidepressant medication that I've been on in years. And I'm starting to feel real emotions again. Yes. Which is so strange. And it's an ocean of emotion. Like, I have so many, a myriad of, of emotions I felt well, today at work. Sort of my understanding of standard antidepressants is that it's uh, a means of chemical deferral. And so you yeah. come off these things and you, you're you still sort of forced biologically to to process <laughs> these things. They've just, it's sort of, been, it's like created almost like a waiting room in your mind. This is a very uh, awkward and like idiot way to describe it. But effectively... Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you don't have the option of not processing feelings. You have the option of deferring until you're, you're no longer either chemically or uh, emotionally able to <clears throat> defer anymore. I mean, but I also, like, look at, like, an old, an old lady, right, who's probably totally happy with her life, sitting on a bench outside of, like, Peach's Cafe in Stuyvesant Plaza where you used to work. Yeah. And I'll just see her and I'll say, like, oh, that's a shame in my mind. <laughs> but Why? You know, she could have a great sex life. She and probably not. She could, uh, you know, have like a good life, and she's just totally enjoying her time sitting there. So then, let's get down to the question: Wh- What is it in your life that you find so deeply fulfilling that Lady in the Park Bench doesn't have? I said the same thing earlier today. Uh, like I, I was talking about how I just want I I want to live. The, the sort of stoic ideal where I don't feel a way about other people's choices. It's just like, oh, that's... that's I would love do. that. I would love... That's my... That's my... That's the most idyllic situation I could ever be in. And I'm, that's my I'm paradise. Goodish at it. Like, I can catch myself and, uh, and opt to not in a lot of situations. <laughs> but then there was a situation today where I was talking to... Uh, d- 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 like I, I call these people batteries, people who you can just you just understand what their response is going to be to a stimulus well before it ever puts you, all, that's all you need to to do is apply the proper stimulus to get so the depressing. exact response you wanted. It's yeah, they're be a, be a human battery. Uh, and this human <laughs> battery started to talk about Lady Gaga's new single or something, <laughs> and it short circuited all of my personal training that I've done on this. In mm. my, I just had an, an initial instinctual visceral reaction where it's like fuck this idiot right and yeah there was there was no option for me to process that thoroughly which is bullshit because i used to just do that constantly that was just like my normal state of of being and i've kind of trained myself to not do that so it's it's really just me not uh 
not not training myself hard enough to not react to stupid shit. But man, it really it crept up on me really quick. Came out of nowhere. I'm just so you know I'm just so tired of um, <clears throat> like like uh, I was just gonna say I'm so tired of living but that was well, set up all kinds of alarm bells. I know. Holy shit! All right, home. Pause. 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 <laughs> um, I'm so tired of living. I'd, I'd like nothing more than to bleed out slow into a wheelbarrow. No, I um. <laughs> No, I'm just like, you're, I've convinced myself, which is the problem, but I convinced myself that, that I'm going to have it figured out at some point and life will get a lot more, a lot easier, but it never, it never does. Life, it just, it's just so many different things come at you all, all the time. And I hate that there's days or the days are different. And I hate that I have to deal with a lot of different things and all different kinds of things every day. It's not that I hate change. I just have this like rage for it's the same day every day. And it's really fucking me up. <laughs> I just, then, I hate, I, I, I'm, I'm grown to just like the, I don't know. I just, there's too many things coming at me at once. I think, I mean, if, if I'm hearing this right, I think this may be a, a question of resolution though. At the same time, because if your major problem is that you're having different days and you want the same day, there's a certain point where you pull that camera back where it becomes the same day. Like the individual yeah, issues yeah. become it, it's like HDTV when you step back. 720 is as good as fucking 1080 from a certain point. Uh, it, so <laughs> it, 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 I think it's just a question of pulling the camera back. I mean, like, oh, here's an idiot. Yep, there's an idiot. Here's an idiot. Here's an idiot. Here's an idiot. Here, there's an idiot. Cool, you just said the same day. There's an idiot, and that's the idiot day. Andrew, um, <clears throat> totally to shift gears here. Did you know that Spotify and Tinder got, got together? And you can see what your potential match is listening to at oh, that's, time? That's a genius idea. That's really good. I guess, like, if I was single... I would have to refrain from listening to all that skinhead music that I usually listen to. <laughs> or just listen to it constantly. I mean, I'd, I'd say you just double down. That'd be great. It'd be like Hazel 88. Come, hey, I see you're listening to uh, No Remorse. Is like, that, yeah. Is I, that hate, that I hate blacks. Skullhead? Skullhead. That's, that's, wow. <laughs> that's, I see you're listening to Skullhead. I can't help but notice that you have a, a strong affinity for white nationalism. What if it's somebody who wants to save me? Maybe that'll work in your favor. Like, maybe, maybe you should be saved. Because if you're in that whole thing, you must get really tired of, like, twos and corduroys. <laughs> so if you want to go out and change a diehard racist... The best place to do it is on Tinder and spending hours going through and looking for people who are listening to, you know, not fucking Jay-Z. Yeah, I feel like there'd be a lot of swipe, which it would swipe left. Left. Act like you don't know, man. (laughs) (laughs) Swipe Swipe a lot of left. Um, (laughs) What is it? How does it go? It goes to right and left. Is that it? I haven't been uh, on there in a long minute, so I I, I barely I barely remember myself. Uh, but um, um I do I've, I want to like download the, it again just to see that, <laughs> that just to do the Spotify thing. Just to do the Spotify thing, I think it's great because you can say, oh well, she's cute. Whoa, she's listening to fucking what's the name of that guy who sung that song? I'll jump on a grenade for you. Oh jeez, uh, I know the song. I don't know the guy. Oh, what's um, his fucking name? I can't even remember. I like that Spotify is doing all this wild shit. <laughs> and I have a Spotify fucking premium subscription. Yeah. But I don't use it. I use Apple Music, and I have a premium subscription for that as well. I have Tidal. Uh, oh, yeah, Tidal. Interesting. That's an <laughs> odd choice for you. <laughs> um, and then All seven of us further, got Tidal. I also have a... Uh, a premium subscription to Deezer, which is Deezy yet another I, music streaming service. Wow. You love uh, music. I don't. It, they, Andrew Music. <laughs> Hot Water Andrew. I like that you just said you love music, and my instinct is to defend that, no, I don't love music. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, you I don't. You love music. You've got a music tattoo. 
just love music. You, you know, is this the hill you want to die on, man? Music. I each of these subscriptions did a specific thing in my life, and I don't like that I'm paying for all of them, and I want them to slowly vanish. And I, today, I actually got rid of, well, I got rid of the need to uh, to have Deezer because I sold the stereo that Deezer requ- was required to use. So that's gone. Uh, made uh, made a pretty penny on that, you know, if I, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, so now I'm down <laughs> to two premium music subscriptions, and... Spotify does that shit on the Amazon Echo, which I like, and it's built into my TVs, which I like, and, and all that shit. But then I also use Apple TV for, like, every fucking thing, and, I, you know, Apple Music on the phone is nice, and my shit is there. I don't know what to do. I'm in a, I'm in a spot. I can't get into an Uber and hijack the person's fucking radio with, an app, with, a, with Apple Music, but I can with Spotify. I'm not sure what we're going to do about your... Uh your problems i don't know i I, it it is i really urge everyone to do the (laughs) spotify uber thing and get in the car and turn on fucking hate breed like you've got to do it no gotta do do it do the spotify tinder thing and say all my uh doobie brothers fans only as your thing i noticed you're listening to destroy everything yes (laughs) i noticed i noticed you're listening to drop dead. <laughs> I've seen drop dead forty times. How Whose many phone times have you seen are drop you dead? borrowing? Because uh, you've seen drop dead a lot, yeah. I see I, you're listening to anal cunt. I feel as though I've seen drop dead more than several members of drop dead. <laughs> Let's not go down this pipe. This yeah. pike. No. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. No. 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 All right. We've we've touched on. We've done our, our every ten episodes. We do our our crust talk, our, our crust check in. This right, is just so. not the time. We did a no. Oh, apparently, Crime Think is uh, alive and well. I read that. I don't believe it though. I, I don't believe it either. How? If we are to mo- say this that is the Crime Think is alive and well is to not know the reach of Crime Think at the era we were talking about. But you this know? is the modern age. The age of modern machines. How could that's that like still saying happen? that Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is still around? Like, yeah, it's still there. Like, the guys still show up to meetings, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> come on, we got to call it what it is. It's not. It's like a dead anymore. committee at work. Yeah, like, exactly. Ooh, ooh, we're still gonna get together, and uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, and like two people show up: uh, Salman Rushdie and Dodi Fayed. Wow, Jesus! Two That's unlikely a... members of uh, Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. That's wild. No, it, uh, Salman Rushdie wrote, uh, you know, you the satanic, uh, satanic verses. verses. Yeah, I, I, if I understand that correctly, that means that he should be, by all rights, killed by members of uh, that organization. If he makes them mad, then he's a friend of mine. He can sleep Although on my floor. It was the Shah of Iran that put the uh, put the what? What is it? Is it called a fatwa or a writ or something? I forget what you what you get in uh, in Muslim theocracy when you're being put to death for heresy. Um, <laughs> either way, so I don't know <laughs> if they. Acknowledge the Shah of Iran's um, <laughs> authority. I don't know how that works exactly. I don't know, uh, but yeah, maybe he would be. Maybe he'd be into it. And Dodi oh. Fayed is uh, again, as we've established in almost every episode in the past month, uh, dead. He's not fucking <laughs> dead. Let I have to remind you that Dodi Fayed is dead. Look, it has no. Uh, <clears throat> there's no way. First of all. I think Liv Schreiber should play him in the uh, documentary. The I think that's a really good idea. The Diana story. That's just my cast, my little casting. I met him and uh, who is it? Naomi Watts, who could play Princess Diana uh, a few weeks ago. I think they'd be they'd be a great couple for the movie. He's fucking dead. Shit. He's dead. How are you? Is this actual news to you? Did you I, not believe me when I said two weeks ago, I yes, Duty Fayette is very dead? For whatever reason, I love how we talk about it every episode. <laughs> for Some whatever kid is like, oh, cool, they're talking about this guy. No, again, no, it do, no it's not like Dodi Fayette is going to catch on like Sammy Hagar did, but he is a hero. He was the last person to see Princess Diana nude and to fuck her. 
hard, harder than Charles could. Yeah, harder. Charles than couldn't could. muster the steel. No, certainly not. With a fucking saber to his throat. I assume Charles has like a like a stunt cock that he uses. It's just like we a, established a that he, he has around. a big British wrench in metric wrench. <laughs> Inbreeding has rendered him uh, fully impotent. Fully, it can't. It can't even get it going. One no, time, it actually, I it, it moves backwards when aroused. It's wild. <laughs> when I first got on Adderall, I thought that I became impotent because I was being intimate with a woman, and it wouldn't get hard for like love or money. <laughs> and this happened to be the first time that I was going to make love to her, or ram her, whatever you want to call it. And I kept putting it in, and it'll go soft. <laughs> this must have been a fun conversation. It was fucking terrible, and she stopped seeing me almost immediately after. Uh, n- not entirely shocked by that. It's, but if that's the real, I wanted to ask her like later. It's like, is the shrinky dink the real reason why, or is yeah. it a, the, my other sad failings? Because right now I've I've, she I've no got chance a chance to even get to the sad failings yet. That was just that was. <laughs> That was it. There's a whole road. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a it's know, like a it's curve. like a state highway. There's no tolls. It's just a ton of different turnoffs. I mean, you can drive as fast as you'd like, but there's a ton of different turnoffs that can take you to a lot of weird places. <laughs> so you can drive as fast as you like, but I'd reckon you should be careful. You should be very careful. Ten and two. Don't make a right turn on super sex uh, oversexed Mm-mm. turnpike. Or I'm going to spend 1200 bucks at the mall drive <laughs> or anything like that. Just don't get close to it. Um, so, yeah. Jesus. All right. Do you feel like you've, uh, you've lifted an emotional burden? No. Great. Never. Perfect. I don't think I have a... Uh, whatever. I haven't talked about myself in a long time. Like my head... And uh, I don't think I should anymore because <laughs> it's not fun. Didn't we just and talk about your head like two weeks ago? I feel like we did. I always do. I'm, so, I'm the only child. It's all about me. Fair enough. And the fucking well, Bumbus' dogs hate me tonight. They're going for it. It's all right. It's, uh, they're going it's for nice, it. It's a nice, cool fall night. <laughs> it ruins. Up here in the sticks, it is very cool. Um. This was from the launch, supposed to be the all questions episode. Yeah. We are now uh, roughly a third of the way in <laughs> to a standard episode length, and we have uh, well, it's that's true. We actually have taken questions. We have taken uh, existential questions from you. Okay. And I, I hope we've resolved them. Do you want to take possibly, likely, uh, less existential questions from uh, the audience at large? Yes. Yes, I do because we, the um, <clears throat> our our Facebook friend group, the uh, the friend zone, fans of the podcast and other people who don't who choose not to be in the friend zone, asked a ton of questions. We got yeah, we got some good ones, like yeah. and questions. some real weird ones. Well, yeah, but we shouldn't read. Them. I mean, I I'll, I'll read those maybe as a dramatic reading. <laughs> So it worked out so well last episode. Even I then, think. I'll likely fucking like erase them halfway. You're like, no, nope, no. Nope. Nah. I'll like I'll wake up in the morning, and be like, nah, that's a no. <laughs> There's some dude who <laughs> went on our ask site and really worked through something from a racial perspective. Like, yeah. really got it off his chest. You know what? I think one of the greatest failings of modern life is we do not have a chance to talk candidly. So, uh, weird racist non, I hope that you feel better. Right. Um, I hope that you can can kind of put things clearer. I was talking about this with Gab a few days ago. Um, as it stands right now, uh, a occasionally armed, occasionally unarmed, occasionally totally complying, occasionally totally resisting uh, black citizen is, like, gunned down by police fairly regularly. Yeah. Um, and there's a, a lot of racial strife, a lot, yeah, we're just like, <laughs> we're, we're hot on race. 
I was talking to Gab about it, and I <laughs> we're find it hot on we're race. hot on race. And hot on race. I find it fascinating that we went from uh, homosexuals being lynched and killed and dragged behind trucks in later years and like all this shit to being, I'd say, reasonably accepted. And, uh, you know, able to marry, like, all this dumb fucking arbitrary bullshit that are, like, set up by, like, fucking Strom Thurmond clones throughout the years. You know, like, uh, all these fucking lunatics. Um, We've gone from uh, a really adversarial relationship to reasonable widespread acceptance uh, fairly quickly, uh, all things considered. And we haven't done the same with race. I mean, from looking at it from a historical perspective... I'm inclined to think that a good portion of that is because there's just really less of a stigma. If you are a white straight dude, or just a straight dude, and you ask a gay dude something that's like maybe inappropriate or weird or something, you know, just like like you you have the the ability to be inquisitive with uh with homosexuals in the way that uh, people are not socially really allowed to be inquisitive along racial lines. Does that make sure. sense? You know what I mean? It totally does. It, it's, it, it doesn't foster conversation for obvious reasons. You know, it's right. like, it's uh, <laughs> it's a, a major issue. But that's one of those things. It's like a, a conversation promotes understanding. Uh, exchange of ideas, however ugly they might be, promotes understanding. Sure. Um, so I went off on a little tangent here, but Rachel and Non, I hope you are now more accepting of other races in your <laughs> life as a result of saying some Vile. fully whacked yeah. out things in our fucking ask. Uh, Which ask we box. will read back to everybody uh, All right, in man. full color. All right. I'm very <laughs> thrilled for the inevitability of some fucking, some jerk uh, <laughs> cutting your voice and... Uh, and and making it seem like you are a staunchly fucking dyed in the wool racist. Half of it won't even need to be cut because we'll be talking about fucking Skullhead. So don't, it'll be very very easy to paste and cut. And I'm I'm excited for you. Don't give anybody any ideas. I'm excited for that to happen and then for it to be forwarded to your boss because some other dude like follows you and knows because the fucking DP Doe guy follows you and knows where you live. Can you and puts not it out on give Reddit people ideas? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm just... Wouldn't it be easier to just not? Wouldn't it just be easier to not? Say that racist stuff? Of course. Yeah. It's I'm, just, I'm, I'm not, not like, really going to say it. I know. I'm, 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 I do like giving people ideas, though. This is exciting. No way. Don't Please don't make my life hard. I worked so hard. <laughs> I, I tried so hard You here. just want the same day so hard. I really just want the same day every day. And I, I just that same day is a living nightmare caused by people fucking pushing your buttons on the internet. No, that, that doesn't happen. Swatting your house. Like you're just sitting there watching fucking Facts of Life and a SWAT team kicks a door in. It's not a good idea. Not sick. Decidedly yeah. not woke. That's such. That's so not woke, dude. <laughs> All right, let's get into these questions. We've uh, <coughs> gone far. It brought us far off the path here. We're not. You are not allowed as a grown man as an adult, as a thinking person, to walk a straight path. Always remember that. Yeah, totally true. So let's start it off with a red hot question that I think is burning on a lot of people's minds. I'm ready. And I think a lot of people are privy to the situation. So this is actually performing a public service. Anonymous said, So my sister and I had sex with this girl at the same time. Jesus. <laughs> My sister and I didn't make contact or anything, but I did. Fascinating that this is more acceptable to speak about in public than racial stuff. Yeah. Interesting. But I did uh, have anal sex while she ate out my sister. And um, oh, this is very bad. <laughs> Started out because my sister <laughs> fucked her first, then told her she would fuck me too. Girl said blah, blah, blah. The three of us were hanging out and this happened. Any insight? Insight. Do you have any insight. insight? Do you have any insight for this ad- sexual adventurer? 
<laughs> this astronaut and the sexual he, he fucking, astronaut. The extremes of experience. This, is, uh, this might be uh, fucking Pinhead from Hellraiser writing it. This is a person. We who are craved. travelers from the far reaches of experience. It's like, oh, jeez, <laughs> fuck, cool. Can you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> my Duh. my insights to this traveler are to open the puzzle box at this point and <laughs> see what comes out. Because like, yikes. Um. Maybe join a some sort of a monastery or a sect, oh yeah, or something f- that reels your ass in a little bit. You have a three way with. I mean, you are so worked up that you're th- what's uh, what people on USA uh, Sex Guide info call thinking with a little head. Wow, your sister <clears throat> had contact with this woman first, and was like, in the moment of passion, she's like, oh, I, my brother. Uh, uh, you know, I think now that we've done lesbian, I think that we need, uh, you know, to have a different perspective. So we're going to bring a man in. But the we only, only man... live in a town with five men. Uh, <laughs> so the only is the town of five men, we're and one of them the is my brother. We're here for three years. Yeah, one of them is my brother. He's the youngest and the best looking. So why don't we just slam? It sounds like a, a hell of a time. It reminds me of when I was in Donnie Singleton's basement during one of his parties. Yes, Donnie and, fucking Singleton, my favorite. And this girl, Kim. Well, these metalheads were like would bust the older, scary metalheads would bust our balls. And there was this pe- like total toss around, pass around girl named Kim. Do who, we still say slam pig, or is that like not cool anymore? Uh, I mean, back then, that was an acceptable term. Back then, I, I have no doubt. I don't feel like there was any logical limits on conversation back then yeah, in no. the basement of Donnie Singleton's fucking metalhead house in Glens Falls. Yeah, no. I this mean, was... in, in polite society. Yeah, this was a rare moment where we didn't have the party at the weird uh, apartment I on the outskirts of town. Man, uh, if you guys are, if you joined around like episode 100 or 70 or something, you're missing some real Glens Falls gold. Going going back. <laughs> going back. Like there's some <laughs> quality fucking rural shit happening there. I'll recap everybody. There's, so this, I was a member of the, like the B team of Metalheads. <laughs> <laughs> I was like on the like Metalhead farm team. Special teams unit. Yeah, and there was all these other guys who were much older. And still hanging out with high schoolers and trying to, like, fuck high school girls and did fuck high school girls. So then it was the typical high school, like, with the the dudes hanging out in the parking lot waiting for high school to get out. Because they had such, they were like, but they were like 25, between 25 and 35. And they usually had a party at this fucking place that's probably torn down by now. But it's out, way out near the highway. Like, in the outskirts of town. It's this, like, apartment but the upstairs was empty. So they would have a party up there and whatever. I don't know what the landlord deal was or whatever, but we had a rare party at Donnie Singleton's house because his mom was a traveling saleswoman who sold knives. And... <laughs> it took me an extra... I'm going back trying to find Glenn's Falls stories, and I'm processing information about a quarter of a second late and uh, the, the knives thing got to me just a moment too late. I apologize. Luckily, there's no possibility of Skype playing this in any sort of sync, so don't worry about it. It's totally fine. I, um, so she, uh, she had a job selling knives, like a traveling saleswoman who sold Very knives cool. to kitchens. Flash Co. Yeah, totally cool. Like Cutco or some knife company or whatever. So she was gone. So we're chilling. Party ended up drinking, you know, and I'm fucking young, you know, like 15. And I forget who it was. One of these dudes is like, uh, we're all hanging out. And they have like a weird like area downstairs. I don't want to stop you, but I do just want to report to the world that uh, drummer slash guitarist slash bassist slash uh, musical inspiration Alan Huck of Self-Defense Family is currently being tear gassed in uh, in South Carolina. Right what? Now. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, jeez. I'm getting updates on my Apple Watch. He is at some sort of a uh, a riot, and he is not thrilled to be there. <laughs> and well, this, uh, yeah, it, this is interesting. Well, peace Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I <laughs> thought that was timely. <laughs> well, peace and love for to Al Huck. Hopefully he's uh, he'll find uh, his way to an emergency room or 
Maybe like a. Uh, they're supposed to put milk in your. I eyes. hope he becomes a cop. I think it'd be really cool if he just if he like like the woman in Superman three that becomes a robot. He like backs into a corner and like wires overtake him and he comes out as RoboCop. Maybe this will tough. Huck. Maybe this will like toughen him up a little bit. <laughs> Maybe he could use. Maybe some he'll bruises. like he'll start drinking real heavy and stop taking all those pictures. That'd be. <laughs> you know. That'd be sick. Like, t- anyway. like, you like break his glasses on purpose so he looks a little tougher. You know, like grow a big beard. I feel like I, I feel like I pulled you out of a uh, a moment. I apologize. No, so, no, you're, I can. You're uh, in Donnie Singleton's basement. Basement, totally. There's washing machines, whatever. But there is a. There's Jason Clapper lived there at the time, but he was nowhere to be found. But he had like a room area that also had like because he used to bring girls over there. It was also set up like kind of like a studio apartment, so he had like. Privacy curtains hanging up, and a bed, and <laughs> a couple you chairs. On that? That's where the privacy curtain came. Like, oh, kind of, yeah. I just want to be just like Jason Clapper. Privacy curtain up, and also like chairs in a hi-fi, you know, and like records and whatever metal and fucking even posters <laughs> on the wall. Like total like studio apartment, but instead it's of like a door, three you know. different copies of Power Slave on the floor for some reason. <laughs> kind of, yeah, exactly. So we were all sitting in there because. It was a very intense party, and we didn't know a lot of people. And they were, they were bringing in people from a town called Corinth, which is oh, over the hill. Dude. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Corinth so is like, uh, like fucking making a murderer scene. That's like yeah. wild. So they brought this guy named Chuck over, who ended up singing for a band called Mocking Justice. <laughs> 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 but, be, but before that, my biggest memory of him <clears throat> is showing up in a pickup and exiting the pickup wearing a necklace made out of real pot leaves. Yeah, very good. And very he's good. like, yeah, so everybody started smoking weed and everything else. Meanwhile, <clears throat> one of the dudes, I forget who it was, gets the bright idea to send this girl Kim in to our little sanctuary. And she's like, yeah, so-and-so wants you to whip your cocks out and I want to see who has the biggest cock and whoever has the biggest cock gets a blow job. And okay, and imagine you're 15. And Where's s- Kim now? Kim, uh, I'll, funny story. I'll, uh, I'll Perfect. That. I'll, I don't want to ruin the end. All <laughs> right, tell that on the back end. Um, so imagine you're 15. Awkward. I'm a little chubby. I'm in camouflage and a metal shirt and, your life goes from zero to penthouse forum in two seconds. And I have never, I mean, I used to be really squeamish about showering in front of other people. Meanwhile, Donnie, a couple other people, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, so everybody starts pulling the cocks out. She's like, and I remember her telling, instructing us to jerk it off. Jeez. Like, jerk it off and make it hard so we can see how big it is. She's fucking drunk. I remember she was holding a cigarette, holding a pack of cigarettes in the left hand and a lit cigarette in the right hand. I remember that vividly. So I do it too. <clears throat> I did not have the biggest cock. That big cock went to our friend John. And then I saw him get blown. Wow. And there's this dude, Corey, who took it upon himself to start masturbating. All oh, right. And all right, Corey, way to fucking break the mold. Yeah, like while watching our friend get blown, and then we all ended up getting blown, and I was second to last, and it was very I, weird. Yeah, I, was, I feel like you imprinted on this uh, this situation a little bit. <laughs> so that's as weird, I think, as your conundrum. That's pretty fucking weird. And it, because of my age, it made me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, this is how you could end up. And, <laughs> and uh, flash forward to like four years ago. Coming back to my folks' house, I stop at Cumbies. And there she is, working. That's almost exactly what. <laughs> She what I had in mind when I asked. Not even a half I mile. I almost feel like maybe you told me this story before because I, 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 I pictured a Cumbies. I did. I told you the story. There you go. Ago. That makes sense. 
not on the podcast, but I told you in, in real life. Um, and she's working at Cumbies. <clears throat> and she looks very different. Like, dimensionally. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm trying to be nice. Um, but it's weird because she's, we are a mere half mile from where it took place, where the blessed event took place. And she remembered me. Uh, of course. She's like, oh, my God. It's like, oh, what you doing? Uh-huh. Like, very enthusiastically remembering me. You know when somebody you haven't seen in forever enthusiastically remembers you? It happens to me at rest areas all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay. It's like, I was like, yeah, you know. And, and she's like, oh, you ever talked to any of the guys? I'm like, total time warp. And I'm like, no, never. <laughs> Never once. Never one. Not since 1996. Never. Did you ask for updates for all of them? No. No, oh, that's I, uh, a shame. I was really. I was kind of upset. Uh, I remember because I was going to buy one of those King Nutties, like those those frozen, fucking like prepackaged ice cream cones. Can't do that then. No, I. But I forgot because I was sidetracked by her. That's a real shame. And I left with just the soda, I think. But she was very, was very, she was in bad shape. I mean, yeah, that's sort of what happens. So that's, that's what, sort of how that story ends. So that's what, that's how what can happen to you if you fuck women alongside your sister. Yeah, I'm, I'm still sticking with that monastery thing. You don't have to commit to a lifetime, but you might want to give it a year. Reset button. See what's up. Yeah, just a good reset Stay button. Stay out of your circle long enough that people forget about you. Yeah. And you're forced to make new friends. Yeah, that's a good idea. And you end up making friends who like LARP. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like shit like that. Like totally different life. And then you'll like, a band will be playing that you ever, that you like and you'll go see... Not totally forgetting that other people you used to know might be there, and then everyone will act enthusiastic about seeing you, and you'll just remember it. It'll all come flooding back. It'll exactly be like, oh Jesus, I gotta go. Oh God. Oh. It'll it'll feel like the room is on fire, but it's not. You'll like start dating a girl who does computer programming for like a nonprofit, and you'll you'll laugh because you used to make fun of cargo shorts. But there you go. You just bought a pair, because fuck it. Different. All right. Now times. we're just depressing this dude. Now we're just talking him into staying in this fucking perverse. Different ass times call for different on. looks. Okay. So with whereas a Star Wars shirt and cargo shorts was a major come down when you were cool. Now it's just just I'm just where to hang around the house, which turns into dinner. A tire, and then I feel you know. So bad for that dude. Like the dude who, yeah, like is like well, this. Just becomes what I wear. This is just I'm, becomes what I wear on the daily. It just, I'm just. I had I didn't decide to check out. Life is making the decision for me in an insidious <laughs> way. Just one day, like yeah, you know, uh, behaviorists talk about micro decisions. <laughs> Little. Little tiny, tiny like little Malcolm decisions. Gladwell decisions that yeah. totally fuck up your life long. And you got long those term. cargo shorts and they're sitting in the closet and they're like it's like a beacon, just calling it, just letting you know that the cargo shorts are always the answer. It's like having a chocolate cake in your fridge. You just know it's right there, beacon. Mm. It's right there, beacon of hope. You gotta fight that. You chocolate fight cake that. is my favorite. Um, currently unemployed, single, living with my parents in a shit Indiana city. I'm thinking about going to law school for shits and gigs, go $150,000 <laughs> in debt, sell my soul to the corporation, or say, I'm feeling the burn and join the Peace Corps. Um, <clears throat> both I, are, I mean, if it's... I, it's I just it's hired somebody from a shit Indiana city, and they can only think in grandiose binaries. So this, this he may not be disabled. Wow. This may just be a regional thing where you can only think in terms of two overarching <laughs> and black and white decisions. Like, there's there's no no concept of gray area. So it, I, 
I approach this assuming that this person had a disability, but I think maybe this is just uh, a, a regional issue. Um, is it just, is it, are those your only two options? Impossible. People in fucking federal prison have, have more, more textured options. options than that. <laughs> yeah, they have a whole hour to do whatever they want in federal prison. You have all day and you don't know what to do. Yeah, that's actually the problem. You have all day. That is actually the issue. You yeah. have more time to consider these things the trouble, than you, like, the, yeah. The trouble with total freedom, man. You too much to do. There's too many choices. Why don't it's you like do this, neither of those things and decide to work on your ass? Like, do squats? Do squats. Do fucking go to a library, man. You know, like just oh, spend. Even, okay. I'm not even implying you're stupid. I'm just saying there's no limit to human intelligence. Fucking yo, just go do that. Work on your ass. Um, <laughs> like do squats. If you feel like those are your two options, do read and do squats at the same fucking time. <laughs> if you feel like those are legitimately your only two options, then you are in an unhealthy place in the world, and it's time to leave your parents and in Indiana and Law go go to a place. And listen, you, you don't spend. A, $150,000 on, like, a weird promise for shits and gigs. It's uh. not right. You know, and the other thing, you also don't join the fucking Peace Corps no. because you, like, have the time to join the Peace Corps. It's not how it works. Um, yeah, now there's something. You need, to, you need to spend a little time with you, I think. Uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> damn. These racist... Uh, questions. You're just digging. Awful. You're just digging right through the racist questions. There's a lot in a row. Yeah, which is they're like, supposed I told to be you, funny. He worked something right out. He just he he had uh, <coughs> he had a ghost in him, and he fucking he set it free. No, this is just somebody who thinks they're funny. That's so. That's a that's a kind of like a disease now. I choose to believe that this person is really feeling better now. I you know I hope you know it's uh, there are perhaps they. Picked up all the empty pizza boxes and uh, put them in the bin. Maybe cleaned up the kitchen that they don't use a little bit. Uh, maybe cleaned their room. Probably not. Got on Tinder. Tried to on match. Tinder, checked out the sounds. Match, yeah, checked out the sounds. Matched with, uh, matched with somebody who can pull them out of this this racist hell. I believe in them. This is a nice one. You want to you want to you get some praise? Let's do some praise. I listened to episode one twenty two, driving interstate to an interview for my dream job. I was driving past this full lake, dry my entire life up until now. The sun setting over it as you guys went into that FedEx seven hundred five bit. That scenery, being on my way to something good, and you guys, honestly, it was one of the most beautiful moments of my life. That's anyway, sick. Anyway, I didn't get the job, but. That feeling of pushing myself to a better life and maybe one day reaching it, you're forever linked to that for me. So thanks. You're welcome. There you go, Indiana. Fucking give that a try. Listen to episode Try going interstate to try a different fucking job or some shit. Like, uh, that's not... Situations that you get into... There, There's a... A guy who's in the like the machine learning space, uh, that he, he makes what a, a, most people feel is an overly simplistic statement for machines, and I agree. Uh, but it's something very interesting to think about. He speaks about freedom as a maximization of options, <laughs> meaning that you are the most free when you have allowed yourself the most opportunity. So either of those two binary things affords you both very little opportunity and almost no chance to step out of the decision you made. In many ways, it is a lot like suicide in that you can only do it once. You have no option to go back, and your future, <laughs> your future is uh, in, in high question. Right. Um, this other guy driving across state lines to go after a job and enjoying himself. Golden ring time. Uh, optionality golden ring time exactly dude has uh has the ability to do many things and because one didn't su one didn't work out it's a no big situation so there you go uh, even though you don't like sammy hagar <clears throat> which fucking blows my mind um 
you will have to you have to admit that reach for the golden ring is a great motto. Great motto. Great bad lyric. Great motto. It, do I have to play the song? No, you certainly do not. <laughs> Did you ever work your way through the entire Van Hagar catalog? No, I started. <laughs> I got one song and change in, and something like dra- grabbed my attention one day. I think. Where was I going? I think I was like commuting back and forth. You were to driving up here. Or some shit. Uh, uh, no, I wasn't trying to do that shit that day. Um, I was just listening to Van Halen, <laughs> just regular like when that came on, and I sent you the uh, the photo. Um, no, I gotta. I'll 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 get around to that. Um, let's see. Uh, hey guys, I want to cross over into the Christian music scene, and I've decided on an edgy but biblical name. Rape. Do you think it would fly? <laughs> <laughs> Awful. I do not think it would fly. That's a terrible, bad joke. That's like a... Uh, what's the name of a comedian that wasn't funny? Like, at all, and he died. I forget. I don't know. That's the type Jeez. of joke he'd, he'd make. This is, this is I have a great... Room. Ever? ever um, <clears throat> did you ever play the dozens with somebody? I've never played the dozens. Do you know what the dozens is? I do. The dozens is a game. It's when you try to outdo but each other. But the way I fuck your mother is a goddamn shame. Did you not? You're not getting this. All right, never mind. <laughs> it's when you try to outdo each other with personal insults. Now let's try it real quickly here. <clears throat> Get your best. See, I hate. I know you. You don't perform well when you're put on the spot. Yeah, this is like this is going to end about as badly as the last time we tried this. But I'm gonna I'm gonna launch a missile. And it's up to you to retaliate. Get ready. I'm going to take my time, too, because it's a very calculated um, thing. Um, Andrew. Yes. Your mother is so ugly. Burger King wouldn't hire her. Wow. Hans, your mother is so ashamed that you've created a tornado of self-doubt that is uh, is a self-perpetuating issue caused by your fear of success. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, <clears throat> your mother is uh, so rotund that she can no longer go to bars because... She enters the bar. The uh, they immediately are above capacity, and the fire marshal shows up. Hans, your mother would be so sad that the fire marshal is going to retire a man <laughs> in better in in better lifestyle condition than you. Andrew, <laughs> I can't do this shit. This is fucking your, awful. This is your so dumb. Mother. Uh, Got a job selling used cars, but got in trouble uh, for sleeping in one of them. Oh wow! You can't. <laughs> How do we? <laughs> That's such a funny joke. <laughs> 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 because the I love jokes that have this homeless. weird unspoken subtext. Like your mother's too ugly to work at Burger King. Which means they have like a weird looks criteria. <laughs> and your mother is obviously destitute because she's sleeping in the car she's trying to sell. Either that or she's unhealthy because she gets very tired during the day. I how thought that was a nice... Did up at the dozens? Was there... Did, how did we get here? I just thought it would be a fun thing to break it up a little bit. Oh, I see. Interesting. Here's a question. <clears throat> All right. Please do an impression of Mike Francesa and a WFAN caller arguing about twerking. Speaking of being on the spot. What? This is one of those things that I don't want to indulge because I feel like... Oh, you think racist guy did this? No, I just feel like the conversation about twerking is so fucking, like, it, it's it's so basic. It's by, like buying fucking Yeezys. I talk to kids, hopefully, I think, <laughs> out of buying Yeezys today just because it's the most, like, it's the most are you kidding thing. Yeah. It's just, like, it's it's fucking great. It's like talking about dancing with the stars. Like, That's gross. exactly it. Yeah, it's like, uh, 
you still pay for like cable and watch like the three big channels like CBS, yeah. NBC. It's a not not good scene. I will yeah. not indulge that. I think that's the definition of like basic too. Yeah. And norm and normal. You still watch. You still have a television and watch it in like a normal capacity, like the Were same you, way. Like you're... it's appointment viewing. You've got to be at a place at a certain time to watch fucking SVU. Yeah, like oh, it's fucking it's eight o'clock on Sunday. SVU's on. Instead well, of don't call me till nine o'clock. Don't tell me what's happened. I can't make it. If anybody on Facebook. Ruins this for me, unfriending, unfriended immediately. All right. <laughs> I got... AIDS. I got a couple good ones here. Hmm. Okay, we're going to start with this one. And Actually, this is a question I, I'm curious about. What's wrong with Russell Wilson? Objectively, is Eli Manning a better quarterback than Russell Wilson? <laughs> I mean, the answer to B is obviously yes. What? I mean, because... And I'll say it's obviously yes, because in 2016, Eli Manning has been able to throw a fucking touchdown pass, whereas Russell Wilson does not seem to be capable of doing this, and we're just fucking field golding our way to uh, to a fucking 8-8. Eight eight. Uh, you're right. Um, uh, yeah, I'm actually curious as to what's wrong with that dude, but we already know. We already know. Don't blame it on Ciara. It's that fucking, it's Ciara and him going home and being able to fucking, uh, to, to knock boots. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say something like that. <laughs> him going home to knock boots. Like, what? I mean, it's kind of true. You know, you get pussy blind when you're fine. When you get first, that the first, like for women to get dick blind. That's it. He doesn't have a fucking human wall to just run through an entire fucking uh, defensive line anymore. And that's like, and then Jimmy Graham apparently forgot how to function in any capacity. And it's it like I, my aunt, a friend of mine who used to make zines all the time. Right. All she did was make zines, 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 zines. And then she started dating a really hot guy. She never made zines again. She even bought a photocopier. Jesus. And, but the, pff, that's the promise of, I get very strong orgasms are, uh, it's tough to, it's like, do I want to smell like newsprint? Do I want to, you know, have a long session? That's it. Dude got paid a ridiculous amount of money, got married, lost the fucking, lost the key to the offense. Like, it's it's all... I I turned off the fucking oh, Seahawks game oh. this uh, this week Don't get in me order started. to watch the fucking Colts. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, just turn the TV off. It was, uh, yeah, no, that am. dude's got to fucking get his shit together. Eli not looking particularly good, but uh, is is occasionally completing completing uh, passes, and sometimes they're even to the people he intends to pass them to, which is uh, wild. For him. <laughs> not the other team. Uh, that's occasionally the other team. Um, all right, now, uh, this is interesting. Mm. There are two questions written. They're racial questions, but they are not racist questions. <laughs> but they are oh, no. smack dab in the middle of this dude shaking out his fucking racist shit. So I'm going to skip them because I don't believe that they are legitimate. You know, there's nothing worse than taking the time to write a fake question into Tumblr. Like, what's your life? When was the last time either of you went side to side, front to back in the pit? <laughs> I was doing sound and somebody played a discharge cover. Um... I can't remember. I blocked it out. I've never in a million years seen you fucking seen you anywhere except in the back of a show. Yeah, no, it's, as God uh, intended. I think it's got to be early two thousands when I was involved uh, heavily in the hardcore scene. That at makes least sense. A scene stalwart. And once or twice, I mean, there's still some people who talk to me about the those days, like so far ago, so far ago. 
so far <laughs> so ago. long ago, like 15 years ago. Or like post videos and that kind of thing. And I'm ash- I am feel shame for remembering some details. Like I feel like I should move. I should have moved on so much more, but I haven't because of that's one illness. one of the fucking curses of being like a fucking intelligent person is you remember details on things and it's it, it's I, frustrating because it's like why the fuck why the fuck can I recite a Simpsons episode but I don't remember Long Division? Why do I remember getting blown by fucking Kim? I don't know. I, why do I remember that in vivid detail? Why do I, re- I remember that she was holding? A pack of smokes, like a fresh pack of smokes while smoking another. Like, I remember all those tiny, tiny details. I can see them like like paintings in my head. It's very strange. Um, any chance of getting any current SDF members on the drive? Well, Alan Huck is dying right now, so mm. not likely there. Um, I'm nothing against it. I'd be, uh, I'd be into it. Those guys are never in the same place as me, so it uh, makes things difficult. Just have them um, call in, man. I guess they can call in. We still haven't really perfected that, though. We've tried a couple times for the call in. hasn't uh, hasn't worked. Hence, you calling that dude by yourself, uh, Darren McBee. Darren McBee, our man, friend of the podcast, Darren. Friend, McBee. friend of the podcast, Darren McBee. I talked to him the other day. He's doing good. Oh, he's, he's good for him. He's fucking great. hip is healing. Hip is healing. Uh, daughter started college. Everything's oh, great. Wow. Um, hey guys, after the 9-11 episode, I was wondering how you both like the United States and if you consider yourselves as patriots. I'm from Germany and I'm curious as to how people out of Europe relate to their countries, especially if they have or have had relations to punk rock hardcore. Much love from Cologne. I like Cologne. Very nice I place. I like Cologne. Very nice. Um, <sighs> I do not consider myself a patriot. Nope. I, it's a foolish thing to feel, as best I can tell. Um, it's like real low hanging fruit. Like, I love where I live. Like, you have no like loving things. You have no choice. So, like, I love oxygen. Yeah, it's right. just like, oh, well, I'm glad you like oxygen. That's neat. Me, I mean, me too. It's cool. I love where I live, and you know, I'll tell you what. Try to find oh, this type of freedom anywhere else, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, wait a minute. There's other countries that have way are way better off. Well, this is I, I got I do have issues in the fact that. Like it, when you look uh, through history, the the embrace of criticism is really what sets apart, um, like uh, societies with velocity and societies that seem to be kind of languishing or sort of doing their like criticism is really sort of that point where uh, it's like the demarcation line. Yeah, of course. And I do. I mean, I, I, the my favorite part about America is that like I can be critical as fuck and be, I can be reasonably assured I'm not gonna like die in jail as a result of being uh, critical as fuck. Having said that, I have no uh, real affinity for the country at all. Like if 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 you offered me any benefit, like a cost benefit that made sense for me to fucking renounce my citizenship, I'd do it tomorrow. It doesn't make any fucking difference to me. Um, well, you and I have the benefit of being to mo- having been to to most, if not all, states. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been to. I'd like to say I've been to most, not all, countries that I think are uh, are moving in the right direction. Sure. For the most part, I mean, as cultural differences aside, like I could live in any one of them and be basically as happy as I am here without too much trouble. Yeah, um, well, I uh, I don't like that talk. Yeah, I consider us good friends. That. I, you know what I? <laughs> it's like my Bernie Sanders version. You know I um I consider us good friends, but when you talk like that, I uh it gives me pause. I love when people well say things should. like "give me pause." It gives me pause. I say that a lot actually. <laughs> it gives me pause actually. I said that in a meeting the other day. It gives me pause. I haven't said "going in dry" yet, in, <laughs> in a meeting for this job. I. I thought about that the other All day. All in good time. I've been. I have a lot of meetings, and they're like meetings where people get things done. It's weird. I'm not that used to weird. it. I've never been to a meeting where people have gotten things done. It's so. It's such an archaic thing. We're gonna get together and talk about this, but we're so busy that when we leave, we immediately forget what we talked about. Yeah, that that is the extent of my meeting expertise. It's great. 
Like unless I have somebody taking notes, because God forbid I take notes. Yeah, you uh, can hire me. I'm a I'm a great assistant. I got a good note taker. She's awesome. She's fucking. She's on on the point. Yeah. Um, on the point. <laughs> she's on the point. What is Andrew's hot take on the golden age of Hollywood? The great faces. The great. I, that's just fucking stupid. Who cares? Bad. Like I was watching something about the fucking. Uh, the Black Dahlia murder and how it's like, well, this could have been a deep Hollywood conspiracy because look at all the people that this doctor was helping. Shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Who cares? Why are we talking about this? Shut up. Stop. This is stupid. Um, yeah. I have a, uh, <clears throat> there's a question that is mean. All right. Statement. Now, this is obviously a joke, but I'll just this is just going to give you a very a nice vignette, a sliver of some of the hatred that we get in our ask box. Stop talking about the strokes like the way you did on the podcast, you posers. Do you even have ears? The strokes are one of the best bands in the U.S. history of rock and roll, and you should be ashamed for disrespecting rock and roll. Are you mad because Julian Casablanca fucked your girlfriend? I bet you think you're cool because you play in gay hipster punk bands, but guess what? You're not. That's cool. That's racist. That's racist guy. It is a racist guy. Um, Andrew, how much do you miss the chair? Not at all. I got a better chair. Thanks. <laughs> no. The chair went to a good home. Uh, These fucking um, racist questions are making me sick to my stomach. I found myself at a warehouse studio not far from where I live, surrounded by awkward white punks and wondering, what am I doing here? Who are you people? Do I need a new social circle, or am I just being shallow, a uh, shallow piece of shit? I feel like this is the kind of crushing thought people get 20 years down the line. No, it's not. No. This is, it, this is what happens when you are uh, in these situations and you have the the ability to think clearly that's any, just what happens any attempt usually like ra- around the time you turn like 21 any attempt to be social usually involves those thoughts running through your head yes no matter what you're doing you could be the greatest show seeing your favorite band ever you could be doing anything and those i mean i think it's a, it's a form of self-preservation when those thoughts run through your head what am I doing here? Who are you people? Because if you're like Mr. Fun Guy who like loves everybody and wants to know everybody, you get jammed up. So it's a le- you're like you're a little leery of people for good reason, because they're people. And it's not a crushing thought, okay? Like just... Don't think about everything. Like not all your thoughts. Like most of your thoughts aren't crushing. And you have to have a soul in order for it to be crushed. And and you, experiences like this develop your soul. So that's very true. Go to that warehouse every weekend and feel great. Feel that false sense of superiority that you're forging by going there. And thinking you're better than everybody else. Because in a way, that shit feels great. Even though it's probably not true. That's how I get through a lot of shows. And performing. And living. (laughs) Because I know it's not true. But when I go to a show, I think I'm the fucking shit. I think I'm hot shit. You work that room pretty well. You fucking, uh, the record scratches when you walk in there. (laughs) I, it's how I feel, you know. It's it's. I walk in. Hey, what's up? Hey, you know. I can talk to as many or as few people as I want, and because I don't owe anybody anything, and I don't even owe myself anything. Just, I'm just here to have a beer, and it feels good. And then you reach that point, then you have a soul, and then you're a man or a woman finally. And not a weird, like, teen who is in their 20s and still a, a teen. A weird teen and, yeah, like a 26-year-old's body. Yeah. You're like a 20, you're like 26 teen. <laughs> yeah. You're like 25 teen. You have, oh, I'm having the same feels I've had for 10 years now. 
They just don't go away. Then you haven't really. I don't think then you. They live. start to go away, but I it panics me that they're leaving, so I try and like enunciate on them. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna double down on my 2015th <laughs> birthday. <laughs> double down on feeling like I'm not allowed to be places. It's wild. I'm gonna double down on apologizing for showing up to a show you asked me to attend. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite shit. Oh, I'm sorry. For what? All right, I got a heavy one. Oh, boy. I imagine I'm too late, but is my recent difficulty with anxiety, paranoia, and feelings of impending doom for no discernible reason, possibly due to long-term exhaustion and stress? Do I need to see a doctor, or should I just try to sleep more? Andrew, I'm counting on your expertise. All right, let's get into this. I'm going to crack my knuckles. Can I, get, can I catch this on camera? On camera, on microphone. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, we should do this on camera. I think it would be a good show. Yeah, you want to do this? We can do. We can do a uh, podcast, the uh, video podcast network, a punk video podcast network that you just pour money into and nobody pays for, and you eventually go broke. No, well. we'll get you know, we'll get fucking fucked up, dude, to come in. You know, we should definitely do that. All right, here's the deal. Let's define the problem. Mm. You're feeling feelings of impending doom and anxiety and uh, and all that shit. Let's call this what is it? What's that? What does that boil down to? It's a, I mean, to me, I'm not living your life, but it seems like you are not feeling uh, a sense of agency in your existence. <laughs> you know, <laughs> where that is makes your agency? Where is your agency? Um, yeah, it seems like you don't feel like you can control your shit. So uh, that that feels threatening. And that's like that's that shit is how people get fucking PTSD by feeling no agency in threatening situations. That's it's like a, a bad scene to be in um, a very bad scene to be in if it's warranted and situations where you're just misinterpreting life as being threatening. It's just like fuck, it's just it's just a bad look it, it, like there's no no good comes of like indulging that part of yourself. So if we're going to boil this down further, if you're feeling threatened like you've got no control what is the logical response it's either fight or flight so i'm going to urge you to either start running a lot or start like i don't know taking like kickboxing or bjj or some shit where you're like physical and aggressive what is, uh, and what is bjj a, uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu oh like just some shit where you're just like rolling around fucking like fighting with somebody or just start running the most basic fucking evolutionary response to a stress situation you just run that's it um you might need more sleep i don't know probably not uh you might need to see a doctor i'd say almost certainly not uh i think you you go to see a doctor when you're actually really sick not when you're like feeling off i d don't fall into that <laughs> yeah, no, fucking don't do thing that. Uh, doctors love to give you bills for shit you don't need. Uh, and it, I don't even think it's out of malice. It's just become the way things are. Um, the amount of people who, like, die from doctors just doing the wrong thing is, uh, is significant. <laughs> you, know? you did the wrong assume, thing. Yeah, I don't assume you're going to go to a doctor and be like, I'm stressed and they're going to do something that kills you. But it's like, why, why there, wind up there? There are people who do that. Oh, for sure. For like I'm sure. having anxiety... So I'm going to go to the emergency room. Yeah. Um, Which is wild. So yeah, just put fucking, put shoes on and just run. And it's going to feel awful and you'll hate it, but just do it. And and uh, you just don't expect miracles right away. This shit doesn't solve your problems right away. Uh, there's no such thing as a problem solving miracle. It, it happens slowly. Like, uh, let's assume that you're terrible at running and you can run exactly one-eighth of a mile before you collapse <laughs> in a, a like a puddle of human that uh, whatever that's fine you know you i mean i i wouldn't say you're in great shape but it, it is what it is the <laughs> next day if you just have the discipline to do it again and if we define discipline as doing the thing you least want to do at the point where you least want to do it when you do it again the next day you will run and like uh, eight zero point eight one miles before you collapse, and the day after that zero point eight two, and so forth, until you're just doing your normal thing. 
And when you realize that, that all these things are cumulative, I my Mary says that every time I see her, and I love her for it. It's so good. Everything is cumulative. It's my favorite fucking thing. Like, I want it tattooed on my neck. When you realize that everything in life, in every capacity, is cumulative, uh, that uh, that equates to a sense of near-total freedom. Like, that solves almost every problem you could ever have, is understanding that everything is cumulative and that uh, time mm. is the only constant. Wow. So just fucking just I don't know ju- just run or fight or fucking punch a pillow a lot or I don't know do do whatever it is to feel aggressive and just change your fucking mode and uh, these things will go away unless you're physically being threatened or mentally being threatened this is just you misinterpreting shit that you don't need to you probably even consider let alone misinterpret so just fucking fight or flight it everything is cumulative every single thing wow is, uh, yeah well you helped me. The, Actual it makes me key feel great. to freedom. You helped me out, man. Good. I, I didn't do it. I have to tell, you I to tell me Mary. Out. You helped me she, out. Mary's too busy being in Thailand kicking somebody's jaw off their head. But, uh, you know, when she gets back, fucking, uh, you can thank her. She's a tough cookie. Speaking of STF members, she's a tough one. She will punch a hole in your chest for sure. It's fine. That would be great. I mean, I would have her do that but i wouldn't like turn her in or anything like, no, i no, really wanted to die just let her live yeah i mean like i'm not gonna turn you into the new york's finest or anything but if you want to if you want to you know like a same oh hung like blood sport punch a hole in my chest i'm not against it <laughs> you're okay with this totally i totally with it and it gives her the experience of killing a man with her bare hands which is would is probably very uh... useful feel like in, uh, maybe combat. she's experienced this before. I don't know. Uh, you want to do one or two more? Sure. All right. Pick your poison. Pick your poison. Pick your fucking poison. Lower, pick your poison from <laughs> Kenosha. <laughs> What's going on, guys? We're pick your poison. <laughs> and I'm um, just, uh, I'm just going to let you know right now that if you like High quality, all original rock. I haven't done a classic rock podcast, like a Kiss podcast voice in a while. I am going through a fucking Kiss renaissance right now. I was driving (laughs) down the street a few days ago and Cold Gin came on a playlist. Awesome. Fuck. Cold Gin is such a goddamn good song. It's the only thing. That keeps us together. It keeps us together, Cold wow. Gin. Usually it doesn't do that. It usually tears us apart. That is a really indicative of where Ace Frehley was at the time. Where he's in a relationship, and a no-win relationship with a woman, I'm guessing. The cheapest stuff is all I need. Yeah, exactly. It's Man, what a fucking kiss is so good. Dude, dude. <laughs> this is so good. Wow. Oh man, I still uh, I still think about that morning where <laughs> <laughs> driving through Detroit at six a.m. and oh, we're yeah. sleeping in the back, and you'd be like, "Yo, put on Kiss." <laughs> you put on fucking <laughs> blum, 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 blum. Starts with strutter. I know uh, a thing or two about her, and everyone's like, "Oh, <laughs> oh God, why? Like, why? 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 Why would you do this?" Everybody knows, and we. The thing is, it wasn't like we we're gonna put on one song. We were completists. Oh yeah, no, so you, you had that from... fucking huge iPod yep. with the entire Kiss discography. So we started from the beginning, and by the time we hit fucking St. Louis or wherever we were, we're like toward the end. We're like on fucking creatures of the from the or creatures of the night. Like we're like loud. I want to hear that. And meanwhile, the other band members have experienced the mental fatigue of having to listen to. Eight Kiss albums in a row. Dude, I love it loud. Else. Also, great song. Yeah. Great song. Really good. The uh, fucking uh, Kiss Dynasty sure knows something. Great. Whew, really good disco kiss. I've been yeah. up and down. I've been turned around. I was mystified. Oh my! Oh, fucking tears are falling. I think disco kiss is kind of what put me off of Kiss for not even put me off, but. When I would do, you know, like a mix for like a long drive or something, I'd always put on fucking uh, Disco Kiss somewhere in there. 
and I started, you know, I got enough of where I started to, like, skip it a lot. I forgot how good, like, fucking, yeah, like, Strutter and all the fucking, uh, like, Love Gun and shit. Like, I forgot how good all that stuff was. This is my shit. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm shooter's welcome to Crystal, dancing for the first time. Really good. Please give a big shooter's welcome to Sean, dancing for the first time. Oh my god, it's Sean Duty. Holy shit. Please give a big shooter's welcome to Andrew. Oh, wow. Dancing for the first time. Would you go stripping? Look if the song was playing. It for this, yeah. I like how often throughout the Kiss of the he Paul Stanley refers to himself as like a little boy. As a what? As like a little boy. It's yeah. always a lot of songs written from the little boy's perspective. It's very weird. I like how he's like, you come to me with a different look. This is some introspective lyrics. Like, you know, when you're in the doghouse, I'm sure you've experienced that with, with Gab. Once or twice. Times. You come home and there's a, she looks at you, she comes to you with a different look. Uh, different like she might come home with a different look shortly because i <laughs> i probably should have cooked food it's like the pots are cold super late uh, yeah pots are cold right now and i feel like she's gonna be she's gonna walk in and be uh, you're not holding up your end of the bargain she's non plus i'm really fucking up i haven't fed the cat i haven't done anything i'm just sitting here fucking talking about kiss with you this is like the quintessential should i leave this dude situation oh my god where it's just like i just worked late For and there's no dinner eight. and this dude is fucking Talking to his fucking bud like 150 she, miles away about kiss records. If she leaves you high and dry, you know we can just get a we can get a, a crash pad. We can just get a crash pad. <laughs> we can get a crash pad and we can talk about kiss all night. Oh. I'm going to bed now. I don't go to bed yet, dude. We're only Not on yet. We're not even listening to the entirety of Kiss Dynasty. We haven't listened to. T- right. We haven't watched the Tears Are Falling video from Paul Stanley's <laughs> solo tour in 1989 with with Bruce with uh, Bob Kulick on guitar, which is great, and you should watch it. Last question: You pick Fire Away. Okay, Who's what's deserving? the most white trash hill person thing either of you has witnessed slash heard about? Also, Jeez. what's the most white trash hill person thing either of you have ever done? It's a twofer. twofer. Um, From most white trash hill person thing I've ever witnessed. From uh, that question is from fans Alexander and Corey. Big ups. Damn, um, I don't know. There, I mean, there's there's a lot. To well, I just talked there, about getting blown in front of my friends in the basement in a yeah, in I a think privacy you... area. That's pretty <laughs> white trash. By the same woman, sloppy uh, 3.5s. Awful. Damn, I'm really drawing a blank on this. I think it's it's um, it's like option anxiety. There's just so many fucking things. <laughs> option anxiety, a great name for um, a band. Option anxiety. I mean, really, the the most fucking the most hill person thing I've ever seen happens anew daily. That's just it. I wake up every day to a world more hill person and less inclined to uh, search for knowledge than I did the day before, and it's uh, it's upsetting. Can people in Europe be white trash hill people? Oh, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. So have, you, have, have you not been to Belgium? Is this fucking <laughs> new to you? <laughs> All right. So I have. One, I just thought about this and remember this. Germany, Munich, at a squat, the show is going on. And a, there's a drunk crust punk there, because of course, with a dog. The punk got stood up and vomited. Excellent. And the dog came up and ate the vomit. Oh. That is the most white trash thing I've ever seen. Hill person, it's one of the most revolting things I've ever seen. He had an altricial relationship with his dog. He was like a, like a mother bird. The oh. dog, the dog, lapped it up and was wagging wow. his tail the whole time, and I thought that that was uh, it was interesting because, yeah, most of that that puke is like ninety percent booze, and like some whatever gruel he ate, like a bowl, little bowl of gruel. So the dog is just as fucked up as he is. But that was like, 
that was actually the moment where I'm like, wow, I'm in another country. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no, like, it's like, it's like a completely different thing here. Because that, I mean, no one was affected by it. He just was like, bah. And muttered to himself in German as the dog was licking the puke off his boots and his pant legs and the floor. Oh. Perfect. Perfect scenario. All right. Most hill person thing I ever did. Um, <laughs> I think when I was in my friend's Beamer driving around like in Vermont in the middle of the night just because we had nothing to do and that's what you did you just drive around in the middle yeah. of the night because fuck it whatever fucking pre-internet just I, drive around pre-internet if there were podcasts it would have been a podcast um, and his transmission went out and we wound up having to drive backwards for like <laughs> <laughs> like the end of license to drive <laughs> that's great the only gear that worked was reverse yeah Yep. Very white trash. Yep, not great. I think uh, that... The, the Beamer had, like, holes in the floor and everything, too. It was exactly what you'd expect. You taking your license picture in a PJ top is pretty white trash. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. I was going through some shit. Yeah, you had a Compassionate Revolution shirt. I did. I had multiple <laughs> Compassionate Revolution shirts. As long as I'm through and through. Well, this has been a, uh, a real soul search. And, it really uh, has. Once in a while, it's good to have a all questions episode. Where we can really get the temperature, feel the po- take the pulse of our fan base, who is uh, wildly racist, wildly super racist, and also um, at a, cro- a crossroads, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, which is par for yeah. the course. So, thank you for no financial questions that time through. That was nice for a change of pace. It's great. We have the same. Uh, we have the same answer every time. <laughs> I know. Just fucking put money away put and money stop. In a What's wrong with you? And forget about it. And then, whoa, you've got money. You got money. Wow. Boom. It's almost like this has been something that people have done since people traded fucking stones for pelts. <laughs> if I save these stones, I can get more pelts or not. Same shit. Put away five dollars a day. And bask in the glory of your thousands. All right, we're getting into financial stuff, veering us away. <laughs> okay, never Anything mind. Anything you want to plug? I don't know if we're going to have another episode before the show, so uh, Brooklyn Night Bazaar, and I think the 30th, come see me play in self-defense. Somebody wrote and asked if I was checking out of self-defense. I'm not. I'm playing on uh, the 30th. Come see it. Yeah. I'm recording a record. I got shit going on, man. Don't don't judge. Yeah. Don't judge. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and come. I'm going to try and be there, pal. Sick. And, uh, Sick. Yeah, especially. Perfect. So that, especially that'll add an extra level of me having to finish my quarter and then play a show and also to have to like <laughs> get oh, you a spot to stay. That'll be great. Oh, forget it. I'll just Fuck. send you my Fuck. well wishes. Maybe you could Skype me in. Just I would say just Skype in. You're all good. <laughs> Skype in. Um, you have anything you want to plug? No. I fucked up the well, Fantasy then. League. You fucked up the Fantasy League. It's all right. I'm uh, still recording music. Whatever. Very sick. All right. Well, uh, this concludes this this question and answer. So this uh, this Reddit ask me anything. Yeah, we did. Uh, this is episode one twenty nine. Twenty nine. One thirty is, right? is right around the corner. One thirty. Cool. It feels Dude. good to be back on what a, a neat schedule. Number. Man. It does feel good to be back on a schedule. And I, it feels good that I now have all week to edit this. That was like. <laughs> That's going to be... I, I can't wait to fuck this up and still have to panic edit it uh, the day before it goes up. But for <laughs> right now, it feels this feels free. No panic edits. We're going to be good. All right. We'll be back next week. Let's cue the music. Reach for the golden ring. Yeah.